You know, when I first started playing Wolfhammer, there were only three jets in the German tech tree and one rocket plane. And times were very different back then. The top tier plane was the ME262 and it would fight against Sabres because that's what the matchmaker looked like. Needless to say, I'm quite familiar with the word compression. And on the other hand, I would love to be a bit more familiar with the word decompression, which we've been asking for for years and have simply not received. The recent changes to 10.3, they don't do pistol. And I'm saying that because back when 9.0 was top tier in, say, patch 1.57, uh, we were asking for a battle rating of 9.3, at least a battle rating of 9.3. We're currently sitting at this point where I can't but but notice that these dev servers coming out and will be coming out for the next two, three weeks before the patch releases. Um, again, of course, another patch, another wasted opportunity to actually do something positive for the game. Um, but it's fantastic. The community can get hyped over it. Content creators can get their wet dream of free subscribers. And me, yeah, I get just another painful headache by looking at all of this mess go down in the first place. I digress. Let's focus on the uh, second ugliest duckling in the room. This is the HE162, and it's been in the game for, like I mentioned, as long as I can remember. And it wasn't always this. In fact, it used to be quite different. Now, my fondest memory of the HE162 doesn't actually go back to the old days of RRB, or dare I say, historical battles. It in fact goes back into a time that many of you will never have heard of because it was a time of full realistic battles. The currently known simulator battles used to be called and referred to as full real. And it was amazing. I remember I have a tutorial out there for how to fly with mouse. I don't actually know if any of those controls are still up to date and I'm kind of tempted to one day just uh, download that same configuration and just see if it's still uh, even remotely useful. But I spent a lot of time flying German planes in full real battles. I flew the G2 Tropical a lot, the BFR-9, and for whatever reason I set, I set myself with the HU-162. And I think it was because the plane was small, hard to hit, and it was sort of easy to fly with mouse aim. The disadvantage of mouse aim compared to using a joystick or some type of track IR setup is that it just, it's just not very accurate. Planes that go into flat spins easily, like a Fock Wolf or 90, they just weren't very comfortable to fly with. And since I'm not a realistic pilot enthusiast, I don't, I don't find DCS World or these simulator battles really intriguing, I think that the best solution for people who wanted to play these battles was to just use their mouse, because it's free. They don't have to spend any money on it. Yeah, you can buy a joystick for relatively cheap, but then you're losing out on that head tracking, which is also nice to have, and yes, there are budget alternatives out there, but at the end of the day, if you want something high quality and you want to have a joystick with pedals and, you know, you might as well just buy yourself a freaking Cessna and get yourself a pilot's license. Now, the HU-162 has always been a bit of a special plane. It's always suffered from a couple of things, a low amount of ammunition, guns mounted under the bottom of the fuselage, um, the engine overheating like crazy. And these things were reasons why the plane simply couldn't do as well as its counterparts could. And because it's an early jet, it, there's always this dilemma. You know, if it gets up-tiered, do you want it to fight these middle-range, you know, good jets? Or do you want it to go against top-of-the-end uh, props, super props even? And it was sort of stuck between, because as a plane, it's faster, but not quite fast enough, and its acceleration is not there, and its climb rate is worse. These planes are the worst to actually balance. Now, since I'm personally not a huge supporter of fully historical realism, I think that planes, tanks, ships, whatever, should always be balanced with gameplay in mind. So, if that means the HU-162 should be at 6.7 and have, uh, you know, better engine performance or less engine overheating or whatever, an air spawn, you know, you can, it can be quite, quite imaginative here. Um, I think that would be better for the overall standing of the game than just saying, okay, this plane shouldn't be that good because it wasn't that good in real life, and then put it at a battle rating where it sort of struggles. So the match I'm going to show you, and it's obviously only one match because I couldn't be bothered to fly this plane out for more than 20 minutes, hence 20 minutes of fuel. Stealth belt, because I'm comfortable with the MG-151s. If you're not familiar with this plane, 
or if you're flying a stock, I mean, you won't even get an option. Um, what I'm also not understanding is where the fuck my orange left wing went. I'm sorry, Gaijin, what the fuck? I've had this plane since 2014, and for whatever reason, you decided that no, it wasn't just enough to make the decal smaller, let's just straight up remove them from vehicles that already had them on them. I don't mind it, really, because I play five games a month to make one crappy video so I can complain about how shit your game is, but you keep making these tiny, and I swear to god, the devil's in the detail, it will come back to haunt you. I mean, even without playing the game, just sitting here watching, and I've said this a million times already, I get frustrated. Because these things don't get looked at. It's like, Gaijin has this variety, it's like a, it's like a vehicle orphanage. But they have no idea what the names are. <laughs> That's... Imagine having 15 kids and you don't know what the names are. You're like, oh, kid number one, k kid number two. Y yeah, I think he goes to school. You can't do this. You can't have so much variety, but to have no idea what you're selling. Oh, Jesus, man, it should be a video about a bad plane. Now it's a video about a bad game. Well, who would have thought, man? Okay, it's been about 72 hours since I recorded the first portion of this video. I just, um, I can't. I'm in a state where I just can't. Um, to play the game is one thing, to make a live stream of it is another. That said, the internet still hasn't been fixed. I'm going to have to give another call to the, um, to the ISP. Not a very nice one. Um... Today's the 29th of October, um, it's 11 in the morning, I'm a little bit hungover from having a few friends over, but um, I'm blown away by the fact that I'm sitting here, um, been MIA for a bit, and patch 1.91 has been released. I don't understand if Gaijin just doesn't give a fuck at this point, if they're just so ignorant that they continue to just spam content at, at a god-awful pace. And to think there's another patch planned before uh, the end of the year, it, it just blows my mind away. So, this is what I'm going to say. From, from me personally, you won't be seeing any new content. I'm not going to refer to new patches anymore. I just can't be bothered. For me, it's just going to be shit game after shit game. I can't be bothered to, to even have a look, to even read any kind of patch notes. Um, I play the game about five times a month at this point. I've committed way more of my personal efforts into real life, into cooking, into school, and I've been having, you know, a jolly good time with it, whereas every time I log into War Thunder, I get stressed out, frustrated, and annoyed by all the things that are going on, or rather, lack thereof. Now, since this video was not actually focused to be anything but a description of this plane, and seeing that I've taken a 72-hour break just so I can return back here and actually do deliver on that promise, the HU-162 is a plane that I love and hate because, you know, you're playing around with this old idea of what it used to be and how it used to be. You've probably heard a lot from me talking about nostalgia, talking about how vehicles used to be, you know, and this is probably fine for those all-time viewers who know what War Thunder in 2015 looked like, but for everybody else who started playing last week, it makes no sense. And it's a pain because I think we have a dying breed of information. You know, I have so many stories I could tell, so many uh, memories I could revisit. Unfortunately, no videos to return to since those are gone, but um, I feel like the game that players are playing today is a game they won't remember tomorrow because so many things are happening so quickly they really can't focus. So excuse me the moment as I triple digress here and focus on the P51H in front of us. Now for me, this upgraded version of the Mustang is basically a budget super prop, and we're going to engage it in the best way that you can in a jet, by turn fighting him. Why? Because we have a big brain and a lot of sparks on our side. And I'm going to pause the video right about here. You see, the reason why I stopped here is because the rest of this video is going to be quite beautifully painted in a combination of problems for me. I've got a Yak-15 behind me, in fact two of them, because another one's closing in, and a P-51H. To make matters worse, we're on the bottom edge of the cloud limit, and if you don't know how clouds work in War Thunder, it's essentially something like this. You can't see the enemy, but somehow everybody else can see you. So, I have to assume at all times, something's going to come flying out of, you know, the, the black void and just shoot me down. So, I'm going to use a little bit of a smart tactic 
I'm going to turn fight some more. Of course, I'm just joking. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is get the Yak-15 off of my six. It shouldn't be a big problem. He's only got one gun. I've got two. Um, and there's no real point turn fighting. We have to utilize a different tactic here, which is called target swapsation, as I like to refer to it. I just made that word up 15 seconds ago. The idea is that you have different targets you can engage, and right now the P-51 here is the opportune target to go after. So we get ourselves a kill, we get ourselves up to speed at the same time, and now the Yank-15 is coming back for us, so what are we going to do? Yeah, I could try to outrun him, but there's a Tempest behind me. So I'm doing two things by going into a turn. I'm making his window of opportunity to get a shot on me very, very slim, and I'm also giving the Tempest perhaps a chance to engage him. If he doesn't, well, I'm in a 1v1, and with a Yak-15, I can actually compete, even though if it's just hits. I'll take it. You know, any kind of damage you can get to the enemy at this point is good damage. Now, let's analyze our position in this game. We've lost all of our altitude, we've lost all of our speed, and most importantly, our engine levels have reached cook temperature. But you know what's properly cooked? is a Yak-15 crashing into the ground and you not getting the kill for your hits. Brilliant. But we can't let that sort of sway us away from having fun in playing this miserable dock shit shit stain of a game. Let's continue by going in a straight line and getting some speed up. Because if we don't, we're a sitting duck for virtually everybody coming down from that black void called the cloud limit in War Thunder. Now I spot a nearby AAA and uh, I've got this weird complexion. I don't know, am I the only one? Please let me know in the comment section down below. But I love to find myself in these matches, and when I know I'm doing shit and I think we're going to lose the game, I just go and I get myself a quick ground kill, because uh, it's free silver alliance, you know? Somebody's got to pay for that crap. And besides, I didn't think I was going to live for more than, I don't know, maybe about 25 seconds in this game. And surprisingly enough, then we spot what we don't want to see, and it's a Tempest up above us. This is the problem of mixing bottom end jets and top tier props is that a top tier prop has amazing climb rate amazing acceleration usually a lot of guns and a lot of ammunition and they spray you on the other hand you have point blank precision ammunition that's very very limited you have a jet that overheats can barely climb can't even hold speed doesn't accelerate at all and you have to somehow make this work in a situation where the enemy is inside that black void and you're down at 500 meters just going around at cruising level. At this point, you might as well be flying a Cessna. So being the monkey brain that I am, I decided that the best thing to do here was actually to ascend wannabe zoom climb into this black void of death and try to actually get a sight shot on the P-51. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it in the clouds there. I do make my best efforts to give you 1440p 60fps footage on YouTube, but right now it looks like we're flying in the middle of a bong that's being, you know, ripped heavily by some hippie on meth. I'm confused how clouds work in this game, how they're modeled, how poorly they're designed, and how they've not been touched in years. The Witcher 3, it's a game from 2014, and it looks 10 times better when it comes to their cloud management. So Gaijin, please, get off your fat ass and design a normal looking cloud for once. Either that, or just remove them. Nobody can be angry at a bat cloud if it's not in their match covering about 75% of their uh, bloody atmosphere. Now in my attempt not to bore you, I'm going to fast forward the video by about a ah, minute and a half, so that you don't have to watch me slowly ascend out from this black pith of death and uh, start to actually see some sunlight. We're now at two and a half thousand meters, and we have another P-51. So, obviously, what do I do? I target swap, because that's the smartest thing. Where, where did he go? Where is the little... There he is, and we're on his six, and I can't hit shit, because look at that. I can see it. Look how long I can see the plane before it finally gets spotted. And, of course, my shots are all poor, and somehow, only thing we get are hits at point-blank range. What a glorious disappointment. With a Tempest on his six, and a K-4, and now me... What a difference at how quickly that P-51 and all the other planes have zoomed away from. Nothing I can do. So, target swap station yet again. Check for the tempers that's still climbing up to the sunlight. It's like a moth. Some players in this game are like moths. They see, oh look, we're below the cloud limit again. And the black void of death is right above us. Spitfire going up against the BF-109. We're going to try to sort of sneak in between. Can we get a shot off? No, we can't because we're horrible 
and now we're turning with this Spitfire. That's, that's how you die. But let's be real here, that's about our best option, to just go and fly like a suicidal maniac. And trust me, every once in a while, it sure damn as hell pays off. And that's because this plane can't be flown by a sane, level-headed person. Because if you're playing this plane as a sane, level-headed person, you won't be a sane or a level-headed person for more than about 15 seconds. And then real quick, before the K4 could get the kill, yoink! That one's mine, and um, that is about as good as you will get in a HU-162. That's three kills and two ground kills for a very, very non-sane person. The Tempest has found its way down to the ground level. I guess the moth genes have been turned off. And now I'm gonna now... Blah, I'm gonna now face against the arch enemy, the arch nemesis of the HU-162, the Yak-15. Um, I don't know why, but watching this video back actually makes me want to play the Yak-15. So if anybody in the comment section would love to see Yak-15 or the Yak-15P or the Yak-17 gameplay, smash the like button. Thank you. Now, I'm not going to turn fight with the Yak-15 in this case. I'm sort of taking a figure of eight, so to speak, and making these low, high-end pa- Oh, there's some AAA there. Nope, nope, can't go for it. It's the last guy, the uh, Yak-15, so... I don't even know. I don't remember playing this game, to be completely honest. This was played at, um... You know what, let me actually have a look whilst the uh, Yak-15 crashes. This should be somewhere in my recordings. Here it is. Um... This was played on the... Hold your horses on the 30th of September at 5 minutes till midnight. So, uh, needless to say, I was not sober when playing this match, and I don't really remember it. That's the best way to play War Thunder. If you're currently on a withdrawal from this game, only play it when you're so fucked up you don't remember you've even played it the next day. And then you come round in a couple of days, you find a nice little gameplay, you make a YouTube video out of it, and you get your 15 cents of ad revenue. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, I had a bloody good time making it. I do try to combine uh, a little bit of ranting and a little bit of uh, good old healthy humour and sarcasm. Otherwise, well, this world of ours would be nice, grey and gloomy and nobody's gonna have a fun time there. So, three kills in the best worst jet in War Thunder. Let me know what you think about the HE162A-1 in the comment section below. And for all of you who are currently too busy to watch this video because you're grinding your new whatever the fuck helicopter in patch 1.93, you're a dickhead.